The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host with me this week is The Omega. Howdy, Judy. As Kat was going to be here with us this week, but then suddenly baby shower got rescheduled or something like that. She's not having a baby. One of her friends is, but, you know. Yeah, you can't fuck around with that. People get, or sorry, girls got weird around their baby and their wedding kind of thing, so. Yeah. She should do what her friends need her to do. We don't want her to be killed. Yeah, but, you know, it's just, you know, it's it's like uh, two Griffin claiming what happens when girls sit on the toilet seat without the seat being up, you know? You know, that little... <laughs> Banshee, I've never crazy. made I've never made that noise, although <laughs> I've always looked before. I mean, I was just like, who sits blindly? I know it's like I like don't... how can you, are you how are you walking into the bathroom and not noticing that 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 has occurred? Like I live in a house with another guy. I'm sorry, another girl and two other guys, and sometimes the toilet seat is up. You just put it down. Most yeah. of the time it's down, but sometimes it's up. I mean, it's what whatever. I mean, what are you gonna do? Like, it's like that would be like guys being like, oh, hey. You know, girls always have the toilet seat down. Yeah, we. Just, you know, it's just it, we, it's just adapt. <laughs> yeah, and and if we really don't feel like lifting it up or whatever, you know, we can aim. That's true. We and do have, we, have and, powers. Yeah, and we we can wipe it off if we absolutely need to. But but you know, I mean, that that goes back to like that whole age old like should the toilet seat be up or down, up or down. I've had I've had women it's, tell me that right, it's, I, that it's kind of a. Thing. If you have pets in the house or toddlers, the lid should be down. Right, naturally. That's they really like to... the only. That's really the only qualifier. Yeah, that that. Oh God, I got it. <laughs> I think it was like within the last year. Um, uh, my we have four kids here, and then my cousin and her two kids are here, and uh, the smallest one of the foster kids here, uh, Curtis. He he liked just you know doing things. He likes to troll everybody else basically. Okay. And sometimes it gets to be a little bit of harmful trolling. Like at one point, uh, my cousin Darren, uh, one of one of my cousin's two kids, he you know he's into Pokemon, so he had gotten Pokemon X gift from you know I think it was my mother had bought it for him for Christmas or something. Oh. And you know, he's having fun with it. And Curtis, for whatever reason, he decided to take the game and flush it down the toilet. Why is it with toddlers that the it, answer to everything is flushing down the toilet? I don't know. Darren like, was, I don't remember I don't remember being like that as a child. Me neither. Darren I was, was never upset. like, let's flush it down the toilet. Yeah, Darren was upset. His mom was upset. My mom was upset. And my mom ended up buying him another copy. And so, of course, we have a Pokemon Xbox floating around. And it's like, mm-hmm, I will take that because my copy of Pokemon X is downloaded. <laughs> uh, so, did, did, How old is this kid who flushed it down the toilet? I think at the time he was like four. Okay, that's old enough to know better. I was thinking it was like two or three. Yeah. It, yeah. So two or three, they're like, I've flushed it down the toilet. Hooray. And you're like, no, this is a bad thing. Yeah. It, it, Not he, hooray. Yeah, he definitely knew better. But four-year-old, that's definitely like the little bastard kind of stage. Oh, he is definitely getting there. But <laughs> Oh, God. Just just be, on, be a fly in the Skype chat whenever I talk to Becky about the kids. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, dear. Yeah, today was like International Pitch a Fit Day at Foilside Shopping Center. Oh no! Children were just like like that, that subsonic like wakes up the mice in the wall kind of frequency. Oh no! These kids were just pitching fits all day, and I was like, "Is this like a holiday? Did, are we like trying? What what's going on here?" <laughs> oh lordy! Which speaking of kids, uh, I want to share something a comment that Becky had found on one of Markiplier's latest videos. Mm-hmm. I forget the name of the game itself, but it was one of those like uh, running, jumping, not 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 like uh, auto auto run uh, genre games. You know, kind of think of like Flappy Bird or or something similar to that. That okay. kind of genre game. And this is not a horror game, even though Markiplier does a lot of horror games. I, I don't watch some of them because, well, I'm not into horror genre. Mm-hmm. I I couldn't even sit through half of his first Five Nights at Freddy's video. That should tell you something about me. But. Um, this this father, and it is a father, he wrote in, Dear Markiplier, I am a father raising four beautiful children under the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is off to a good start. 
I recently came across your channel and discovered that your channel is filled with hate, perversion, murder, rape, and satanic images that can hurt or scar my children. These things go against my values as a devout Christian, and I will leave you with a warning. You have 24 hours to delete your channel and videos, or else I will report you to the cyber police for hate speech. <laughs> the cyber police? Oh, no. Not the cyber police. You have been reported to the cyber police! That's like that's like this one lady came up from the wrong side of the queue, and there was nobody waiting, and she's like, "Oh no, I've jumped the queue," and I was like, "It's okay, I won't call the queue police." <laughs> but like the oh no, not the cyber police. I know, right? It's like they don't exist. You know, that's the closest so, we have is oh, the NSA, and they're just a bunch of script kitties that the government said, "Hey, go wild." I I love how people who don't understand the internet try to come on and throw their weight around like it's the real world. Yeah, and even if it was even if it was reality and like Markiplier like had this like booth set up in downtown where he plays all these games and comments on them and everything, you can just walk away. You don't yeah. have to go there. Like that's a, that's the thing about free speech. It's like, okay, well maybe he's saying stuff that you don't like, but you have the freedom not to listen. And also, yeah. like literally you'd have to be someone in the go you have to be with the NSA or the FBI or the CIA and say, I'm shutting you down. But even then, that's an empty threat. Like, I'm going to call the FBI and they'll shut you down. Why? Well, because you're being mean. Yeah, the FBI doesn't care about that. Yeah, the FBI is like, okay, he's playing horror games and commenting on them. Is there child porn going on? No. Well, then we don't care. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, and he, and he caps it off with, I will be praying for you with a little heart. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's like the, the bless your heart, which yeah. tech means fuck yourself. Yeah. Oh. It's like I've discovered over here the Irish people, especially in Northern Ireland, say thank you all the time. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in a shop situation, and I've realized that thank you has two meanings up here. Mm -hmm. It's oh, I'm feel so gracious that you have performed this service for me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and go fuck yourself. Oh God. Uh, it's like there's a German word that also that means you know it's like the same word means I love you and I'll kill you. Isn't what? It? I think they probably would. Yeah, it's like if you're German. Sure. Yeah, please, please, Dirk Hork, I, I know you're probably listening, you know, tell us. Dirk Hork knows every fact, so, uh, <laughs> Oh, lordy. Aw, uh, I just, I'm on Facebook right now while we're having the show, and I just need to tell everyone that somebody posted a picture of them cosplaying as Linkara, taking a picture with Lewis and Vega. Oh, it's the cutest thing. That is awesome. Cutest thing. Double Linkara, oh my god. <laughs> Vega what psyched. does it mean? <laughs> it means Vega's going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. But uh, a little something on, on a slightly more uh, personal thing um, before we get too far in. I've, as, as I've mentioned a few times before, I've been looking for jobs, you know, day jobs to help, you know, raise some extra funds so I don't, you know, so I can actually upgrade things and I don't have to feel like a bum asking for people outside of my Patreon to, you know, to help with, like, one-time things here and there. Uh, but uh, I've got a couple of leads out on this front. They're driving jobs, so if oh cool, so if they get picked, so if I get picked up and I get hired on, I would be driving again, which means shows, you know, the podcast and stuff would likely go on hiatus for at least a couple of weeks if it if it comes to pass, um, at least until I can get a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. <laughs> the only thing is, for a while after I get that, the quality, the audio quality might go down a bit because I'd have to downgrade back to my laptop. I haven't upgraded that in a while. But, um, but you know, at least with a driving job, I could upgrade yeah. equipment and everything. Uh, the Patreon would still be going on because I do want to work towards being able to make a living through that. And but pretty much driving jobs would be a means to an end. So, you know, so who knows? Uh, we'll, we, we'll have to see what happens. And, hey, you know what? Driving jobs also open up other potentials, crossovers. <laughs> you know, managed to do one with CAD. I mean, you know, driving jobs got me to MAGFest one year, so... So, oh, yeah, that's true. So Money! That's a song by a band called Pink Floyd about money, children. <laughs> you don't remember, but you can look it up on the YouTubes. Yes, and speaking of the YouTube, it's time for the shout-outs. Um, I'm actually going to give the D-Pad another shout-out because they have started their, uh, their uh, Mega Man series, Let's Plays. Oh, God, what is it called? I think Mega Madness or, or something like that. The Mega Let's Play, that's what it's called. Uh, just check out the D-Pad over on uh, YouTube. 
and they they're doing like they're starting with the classic series during the week, and this weekend they've started with the Mega Man Battle Network series, and those guys are hilarious trying to get through the original Mega Man game. <laughs> oh, they they're, they are awesome. Go check them out. Uh, check out all their other videos. They did like they had like the legendary Let's Play that took them a couple of years to do. Uh, they do a lot of Pokemon stuff as well. So if you're a big fan of Pokemon, they they've got you. They've got the hookup for you there. Uh, and you were telling me before the show you have one Omega, right? I do. Um, my shout out is for our friend the rap critic. And if you don't know, he got accepted to this really prestigious uh, program in Italy. And he is a classically trained singer, and uh, he would be able to study and uh, perform in the marriage of Figaro. And he's trying to make this money over Indiegogo. Indiegogo. And he made his first deadline, and he has to raise another $2,000 by February 20th. So um, uh, Hagen and I are probably going to do something, hopefully, for him on, uh, on Lesbian Talk. But if you guys can, uh, get out there. Um, you know, if you, if you can't give any money, that's cool. You know, just tweet the link, put it up on your Facebook, share it around social media. If you can give some money, throw some money his way, that'd be really great because he's a really awesome guy to hang out with, and I hope that he succeeds in all his classical music endeavors because classical music is shit hard to break into. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, you have to be, like, really rich. Yeah, so so the links both for the D-pad and for the uh, GoFundMe for the rap credit getting to Italy, both will be... You know, if you're watching the videos on, like, the site or what have you, they'll be in the crotch bar, if for lack of a better term, and, <laughs> and all of that. And you know what? It's a good thing you had a uh, rap critic this week because I don't have to change that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You were telling me that Holly had it last week. Yeah, Holly had it last week. You have it this week. But, hey, you know what? Give Go give give more to him anyway because, you know, it's a big opportunity for him, and I would like to be able to see him take it. You know? That be that would be pretty awesome. I've, I've actually heard naysayers be like, oh, can he just sing opera in New York? It, it's it would be great, but this is fucking Italy. This is this is a chance to go and get some goddamn non-American culture, you know, among other things. You know, th there are a lot of th there are a lot of things when you're in the arts or when or whatever. There's like a big goal that somebody has, you know. This particular one, opera, classical music, best place to do it, fucking Europe. So of course, you know. Uh but that's that's what I've had to say about that. <laughs> oh, so are you ready for the news, Omega? I am totally ready for the news. Ah, there we go. Ah, so here we go. We we're going to be kind of Oklahoma centric to begin with. Oklahoma, where the I don't know the rest. <laughs> that's the only part of the song that anyone knows, you know. Well, I've, I've actually there is there that, that's that's all there is. Just nothing else. There you go. <laughs> Oh, uh, and, and admittedly, one of them is going to cross over with the last "What the fuck is wrong with you?" that that happened because I just wanted to comment on it because it's just that goddamn funny. And to be fair, I already had it in the file before Nash got a hold of it. Oh, uh, so uh, but that's not this first story. This first story is uh, no charges have been filed against a man who shot the police chief of a small town in Oklahoma four times. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation says. Sentinel Police Chief Lewis Ross was shot Thursday morning after he entered a house looking for the person who allegedly phoned in a bomb threat to the Head Start Center, according to the CNN affiliate. Ross was shot by the man living in the house, and the chief had just donned a protective vest, which is credited with saving his life, so he survived. The OSBI said in a press release uh, his condition was not available as of Saturday night. They're talking, I think, last Saturday. Or, yeah, definitely last Saturday, because it wasn't this one. Uh, the man who shot and wounded the Sentinel police chief will not be arrested at this time, the release said. OSBI investigators have extensively interviewed the man. Facts surrounding the case lead, lead agents to believe the man was unaware it was officers who made the entry. Now, I, I want to say this. You know, okay, it, it's it's good. You know, somebody entered. This one's somebody. hard to call. Yeah, it, it's it's good thing. What I find interesting is that it was that the, the police chief is a black guy, and the homeowner is a white guy, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's it's sh it's showing what kind of a culture we're becoming and, and what's being absorbed into my brain. When one of the first things I'm thinking is, you know what? If the roles had been reversed, the black homeowner would be dead. Yeah, I didn't think about it that way. Yeah, it's just how the what the. Thank God he was. Thank God he was wearing a, a bulletproof vest, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad he survived. And I'm, I'm glad it's okay, and I'm, not, I'm glad everything seems to be turning out okay. Because the resident, you know, he he surrendered to the police after shoot after the shooting. I, I, you know, you know, he's like, okay, sure, 
you know, hey, didn't realize it was you guys. Turns out uh, the bomb threat did not originate from that guy's house. Um, and the, uh, oh, there was something else. I think there was something um, in here that said that. And they, uh, ended with, they ended without a warrant. Yeah. Which, why do cops keep, I mean, I know you're investigating a bomb threat and everything, but. I think there's, it's called exigent circumstances where you can enter the house without a warrant. Yeah, but shouldn't you at least? They have to. They have to say police were coming in. They do have yeah. to, to announce themselves. Yeah, that's what I was. They can't just like be like, "Come on in." Although I do, I knew. I, well, I still know a guy that um, when he was younger, he shot and killed someone. Mm-hmm. And he's from Alabama, and he's ex Navy, and he was in his bedroom. He was in a very small house. Some guy in like two in the morning burst into his house, burst into his bedroom, and started attacking him. He kept a sidearm. Uh, under his uh, under his pillow, shot the guy three times in the chest, mm-hmm. and then he called the police and he said, "Someone intruded my home, and I believe I've shot them dead." The police came, they confiscated his weapon, they did an investigation, and then they cleared him and they gave him his his uh, his gun back. Yeah, and he's a really nice and he's a really nice guy too. So he wouldn't be like, "Oh, he's some gun nut. Oh, he's some murderer." I mean, he reacted because he's military, you know, and yeah. thankfully. It, did save his life because the guy was really hopped up on I don't even remember what drug it was. Yeah, I mean, and and the thing is, a lot of the nut, gun nuts out there, they they would look at this scenario and be like, see, this is what happens when good guys have guns. This is why you all need guns. See, it's not enough to have guns; you have to have the training. The guy had military training, so he was relatively safe. Yeah, so he knew how to. Do- he, he, I don't think he still has a gun though. He lives up in Pennsylvania, but I don't, I don't yeah. think he's still like running around armed or anything. Yeah. Yeah, lives in Pennsylvania where they don't allow guns. <laughs> no. Just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Literally, like, the entire center of the state hunts. Mm. Like, he lives in extreme, you know, north-central Pennsylvania, where, like, it's not surprising to see people with guns because it's hunting season. They're getting the... You have people, like, who don't like hunting. I'm going to go off on a, on a tangent. We have so many fucking white-tailed deer in Pennsylvania. It's crazy. Shoot them. Shoot them all, make venison out of their meat, and give the extra to the homeless. There I'm really go. serious here. There Amen. Fucking deer. PSA. <laughs> because deers carry deer takes, and that's how you get Lyme disease. Ah. This has nothing to do with Oklahoma. But. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, it, it, I wanted to share that story for one because, you know, positive ending. Everybody came out okay. But I, I just wanted to just bring forward the, the just how society has been turning around and what's been – I, I guess been. Oh, that's revealed. the first thing that you think about, you know. Yeah, you know, with what's been revealed, especially since Ferguson has happened, since all of these, since a lot of these, uh, you know, you know, white cops killing unarmed black men have been making the news and making the rounds more and more and more and more. You know. Well, actually, one of my coworkers asked me. They said, I, you know, I see on the news all the Americans who are taking like guns to the shopping center and stuff like that. What if a black man does it? And I was like, <laughs> then, I don't, I don't know. But if if that happened, probably there would, you know, the SWAT would take him down. They were like, well, that's kind of, isn't that a little bit racist? I was like, you're catching on quickly. Yeah. America yeah. is not a perfect country. No, it's not. Because see, if a black man was to take a weapon into the mall, just like a white person would, the white person would turn around and shoot him. Well, there are so few guns here that when a shooting happens, it's a big fucking deal. Like some guy in, in uh, I think it was in uh, Ballymore or Ballymena, um, was shot and killed. This was like about a few a few weeks ago, and it was all over the newspapers. It was all over the news. Damn. There was a murder in Bally Money. It was a Bally, it might have been Bally Money. It was Bally something or other. It was near, it's in County Antrim near Belfast, and everyone's like, he was shot. He was shot by a murder, and it was, it's like a big thing, and I was like, oh, please. <laughs> we have that all the time in America. Yeah, just look at Chicago, New York. Wasn't Chicago at least at one point murder Philly, capital? Philly was bad. Philly was bad for a few years. Yeah, back in the day. Oh lordy, but um, we do have some other uh, some other horrible things to talk about that are not murder. <laughs> we have so much more. Yes, but uh, this one doesn't have to do with murder. Still in Oklahoma. Marriage licenses would become a thing of the past in Oklahoma under a bill I... filed by State Representative Todd Russ. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cordell Republican says he wants to protect court clerks from having to issue licenses to same-sex couples. In other words, he doesn't want them to do their fucking jobs. He doesn't want these workers put in the position of having to condone or facilitate same-sex marriage. Well, tough, they can go work elsewhere. And you can hire people that will. That's how it works. Under his plan, a religious official would sign a couple's marriage certificate, which would then be filed with the clerk. 
Marriages would no longer be performed by judges. If a couple did not have a religious official to preside over their wedding, they could file an affidavit of common law marriage. Aha, and see, now we get down to it. Mm -hmm. So saying, oh, if you have a religious officiate, then it's a real marriage. But if not, you can, you're just a common law marriage. Because common law marriage, very different laws apply to common law marriage than to, you know, actual, you have a certificate, everything's grand kind of thing. Yeah, so it's, it's he's wanting to wait, wait, wait. So this wouldn't affect just same-sex couples. It would affect maybe right. it, maybe religious folks that don't want, or or even non-religious folks that don't necessarily yeah. want to go to a priest. And yeah, so if you are, if like suppose um, your wife is Jewish, you were raised Catholic, and um, you go to your priest, he says, "I'm not going to let you marry a Jew," and she goes to her rabbi, and he says, "I'm not going to let you marry a goyim, not in, not in my synagogue." So you're like, well, you have to guess. You have to file an affidavit of common law marriage. Isn't that romantic, honey? And we'll get takeaway afterwards. I mean, you know, that's what if what if you're atheist? You know? Yeah. Hello. You know. Well, or what if you're what if you're a religion that doesn't get involved? Like, what if you're both Buddhist for Christ's sake? You know? Yeah. This this is yeah. He he's wanting to go after one thing, which is. B bullshit it's, enough already. You know what? You know what? This is this is this is so. Take your ball and go home. Fine, and no one gets to get married. He is. It is. Boo. Uh, and then he is quoted as saying, "Marriages are not supposed to be a government thing anyway." Well, technically that's true. Yeah, but it is. So you just have to deal with it. Well, it is because there are laws that apply to you. There are tax laws. That there's 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 legislation that applies to you. You can't you know you can't have it both ways. Yeah. You can't have your cake and discriminate against it, too. That's right. Amen. Uh, Russ, a credentialed Assemblies of God minister. And... Oh, that! what kind of pretend church is that? Oh, God Come damn. on. Uh, but he is upset with rulings that have supported same-sex marriage. There's a lot of constituents and people across the state who are not through pushing back on the federal government for the slam down they've given us with Supreme Court rulings, he said. Supreme Court. They're the highest court in the land. That means if they rule on something, they rule on something to be constitutional, such as allowing gay, gay couples to get married, that means you fucking listen. The translation for that is, many people are not done whining. <laughs> yeah. Same-sex marriage became legal in Oklahoma in October. Happy birthday to me. That's when the high court decided to renew a federal – review, rather, a federal, federal court decision striking down a voter-approved ban on the practice, which in itself was unconstitutional because voters should not – you know, voters, voters. I don't think legally are supposed to have the constitutional right to vote on the rights that other people have. In, yep. You know, it, that's that's how we ended that. up with illegal interracial marriage. Yeah. And apparently, there are some states that still think it should be illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma voted overwhelmingly against same-sex marriage, and the Supreme Court stuck it down our throats. Well, like they should have, because it was an illegal and unconstitutional well, vote. Wait, wait, wait a second. They, they didn't strike it down anyone's throats. Are you gay? No. Are you going to get gay married? No. Well, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, then go, go, play with, play with your toys in the sand or elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so, to round out. Uh, our bit of Oklahoma bug nuttery. Bug nuttery. Uh, admittedly, this one, this one, uh, Nash talked about a bit on what the fuck is wrong with you uh, this past week. Oh, I but, haven't watched it yet. Spoiler. But but I want to. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about it and bring it up a bit anyway because I I have some stuff I kind of want to say. Uh, a recent survey by the Oklahoma State University Department of Agricultural Economics – jeebus, that's a long title mm – -hmm. finds that over 80% of Americans support mandatory labels on foods containing DNA. <sighs> Every kind of food contains DNA if it's organic. Yeah. About the same number as support mandatory labeling of GMO foods produced with genetic engineering. Although, actually, no, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't have that right because – like something like like a Jolly Rancher, just has like sugar, and food coloring in it. Doesn't have anything that that grew. It doesn't have an animal or vegetable in it. Well, no, wait, wait, wait. We get sugar from sugar cane. Sugar cane is a plant. Yeah, but I don't. But but only this. Only the nucleus of the sugar of the only the nucleus of the cell in the sugar cane would have DNA. So if it contained ground sugar cane, then yes. If it's just the sugar that just crystallized crystallized uh, glucose. Okay. It wouldn't have an, any nucle any nuclei in it. Ah, so it it could have it, but it depends on the sugar. It could have it, but it probably 
doesn't. Like even sugar in the raw, it's 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 just the crystallized sugar. Okay. If it had actual cells from the plant, then yes, it would have DNA. But if not, it's just you know it's just like taking you taking some of your blood and getting the iron out of it. You know, it wouldn't have that DNA because it's just those iron molecules. Okay. If it had the cells, then yes. Hmm. Like your 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 hamburger definitely has DNA in it, yeah. but your Jolly Rancher probably not. Yeah. Oh, and and if the government does impose mandatory labeling on foods containing DNA. Perhaps the label might look something like this. Warning! The product contains... <laughs> Warning! DNA! Yeah, this product contains deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. I probably mangled the fuck out of that one, but okay. No, deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay. Uh, the Surgeon General has determined that DNA is linked to a variety of diseases in both animals oh, and no. humans. In some configurations, it is a risk, risk factor for cancer and heart disease. Pregnant women are at a very high risk of passing DNA to their children. Of course, that's the point of reproduction. <laughs> oh, this will cause no end of problems. <laughs> DNA causes diseases, cancer, and heart disease when it's your personal DNA. Just... It's not like rogue DNA comes and takes over you. Oh, people are too stupid. This is going to be a nightmare. Oh, God. Oh, my God. If you're stupid, write the show. <laughs> We need to talk to you. Yes, we need to sit you oh, down. Oh, no. Uh, give me the number this, for Bill Nye. I really need to watch this week's What the Fuck is Wrong with You Now because I nearly need to see National Terror lose their shit over this. Yes. Oh, oh my, my God. God. People, are, people are stupid. And I don't mean to say, okay, if you are personally stupid, I'm not trying to offend you because there is a difference. Okay. And I got into it, I got into it with, with my wife all the time about this. There's a difference between being not intelligent and being ignorant. Some people are just not intelligent. Like, some people have blonde hair. You know, it's just a thing. Like, some people have a capacity for high intelligence. Some people don't. Oh, well, whatever. That's fine. It's like, that would be like blaming someone for the shape of their nose. You just can't do that. But some people are ignorant. And people who are ignorant are people who might have a capacity for intelligence. You know, but they're just like, nope, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to make up my own mind. I'm never going to question. I'm going to believe everything that's told me. And I'm going to be proud of the fact that I don't know. I'm going to be arrogantly proud of that fact. That's yeah. ignorance. Yeah. Oh. So don't feel unintelligent people of the audience, which of course is no one because everyone who listens to our show is lovely and wonderful. Yes. Don't feel that I'm, I'm calling you out. I'm just saying <laughs> know what DNA is before you read out a label. Yeah. And the thing is, DNA, that's something I, I probably learned it even in high school. Bear in mind, podunk little 3,000 person town here. And even smaller towns around in the same county as me, pretty sure we all learned what DNA was in fucking high school. We did, but not everybody remembers all that stuff. DNA is like, just... I, I, know, I know, I remember, I remember, remember, ignorance. Oh, You're talking true. about people who true. are, ig who they ignorant. There we go. The okay. people that, you know, were making paper airplanes and not paying attention in class, or who knew it once to pass the test and then completely forgot it. Uh -huh. That's called, by the way, synaptic pruning. When your brain decides, we haven't used this bit of information for a while. It's not important. Fubba, and throws it away. This is actually a true thing that happens. Oh, Synaptic. Wow. Hmm. Might explain a few things about my memory sometimes. <laughs> well, the memory also does... You, I learned this in, in, last, uh, in a lecture last year, or last term, that basically you hit your peak at 26, and it's all cognitively it's all downhill from there. And my, my friends are, like, 18 and 19, and they're snickering at me because I'm 35. Uh, yeah, I, and, and I still get a bit of it at 32 myself. Old! We're, we're so old. We are old. <laughs> at least we know what DNA is in my day. Yes. <laughs> my day, we had to know that. Which, oh my god. Okay, so, a bit of a tangent on my end. Uh, Becky picked up the original Legend of Zelda for, the, for her 3DS. Oh, cool. And... I love that game. Oh, it is awesome. I'm actually working back through the second quest in, prepare, in preparation for uh, my uh, Gomer play series to take on the second quest of The Legend of Zelda. The whole first when quest I was a little is up kid, right now. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I, I walked to school, and occasionally I would walk to school loudly singing the Overland theme. Da, 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 da. I was a special <laughs> child. Yay! Da, 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 da. Hello, friend. Da, 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 da. That was me. <laughs> Oh, why couldn't I have went to school with you? That would have been awesome. Cringe. Uh, but, uh, oh, God, but, 
But no, uh, she she got it. And she's like, in in her her mindset, and she told me this. Her mindset was, okay, it's an older game. It can't be that bad, right? It, it it's 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 got to be relatively easy, right? Oh no, the game is kicking her ass. And and it's like. I, I, I don't want to say too much because I, I, I have a feeling she wants to figure it out on her own. And at the, and at the same time, she just sounds so adorable when, when she's dying. I know she's, that sounds really she weird. She sounds so adorable when she's dying. It's like, it's like, ah! It then, sucks. And it sucks when you lose that first half a heart. You're like, ah, I can't shoot my sword anymore. Yeah, that does suck. Fuck. Uh, but see, she has... Everything was fine until now. Yeah, but she does have something that we didn't have back in the day. What? Game facts. That's true. Yeah. That's so, true. Although the most we had we was Nintendo Power. Although by the time Nintendo Power started, they were doing things for the second quest. There were there was stuff that I remember back in the day. There was a hotline. There was a there was a hotline numbers you could call, mm -hmm. and you could get you could tell them what game you had, and they would give you tips. And I knew enough not to use the phone without my parents' permission, but I had friends. Or I had one friend. He racked up a few hundred, and this is back in the day, a few hundred dollar phone bill because it was not a free call. It was not a toll free number. It was a 1 800 number, or I think it was a 1 888. And so, yeah, he, he did un unknowingly racked up a huge phone bill calling for tips, and his mom was like, that's it. Oh, dear. Yeah. I, I'm kind of glad that, that none of the kids, and, and, and there's at least two generations that I've seen go through this. Uh, well, I, yeah, well, my own, technically my own generation, uh, I've had cousins come over and play, and they would ask me, like, every five minutes, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? And I'm sitting there, I'm like, play the game. I'm, tr I'm busy here. I'm trying to masturbate here. Go play a game. You know? And then, thankfully, this generation, the kids that are here, they're not as bad. You know, they, they try and figure things out for themselves, and, and work it, work it through. And when they get really, really when they get into a really bad place, then they'll ask, like, my mom. My mom knows a few things. Uh, and if she doesn't know it, she'll send them to me. Uh, although usually it has more to do with Pokemon. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, um, um, will fire work against this rock type? No. <laughs> oh. That's not how you Pokemon. No. Oh, but uh, there, there's one other thing about this article I do want to bring up, though. Because um, I'm too depressed about it to go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. Oh, People are so stupid. They are. But uh, polls repeatedly show that much of the public is often ignorant of, of both basic scientific facts and basic facts about the government and public policy. Like people who think the president control everything. He doesn't. Yeah. Uh, just before Why doesn't Obama do that? Because it's not his job. That's like saying somebody pukes in the hallway. Why doesn't Obama do something about it? Because that's not, not his job. It's the janitors. A, yeah, it's, he's not a fucking janitor. No matter no matter how much you want him to be, he's not a fucking janitor. Although somebody said something really funny on Reddit the other day, they were like, "What if the the question was on on Ask Reddit? What if you ha you were you're alone in the elevator with the president and the elevator breaks down? You have a, you have his ear for a few hours while they're fixing it. What would you say?" And someone would say, "I'd be like, thanks, Obama," and he'd be like, "Oh, oh wait, you meant that seriously? Oh, okay." <laughs> and I thought that was great. I uploaded that. There you go. Thanks, Obama. Oh. No, no, really, I mean thanks. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, just before the 2014 elections, which determined control of Congress, only 38 percent realized that the Republicans controlled the House of Representatives before the election, and the same number knew that the Democrats controlled the Senate. Oh, people are stupid. Public scientific knowledge isn't much better. A 2012 National Science Foundation survey even found that about 25 percent of Americans don't know that the Earth revolves around the sun rather than vice versa. <sighs> Isn't that, like, elementary? Oh, this is so embarrassing. This is why other countries laugh at us behind our back. And they do. Trust me, they do. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Yeah. My uh, God. I it's... don't blame them. And it's just... God damn it. Uh, and you know, the one thing that would that would fix a lot of this... Education. Up the education. You know, put more money towards education. Let's stop playing with our toys in the fucking sand on the other side of the world. Let's 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 make people smarter. All right? Smarter people can probably bring in more money than a bunch of stupid people. People make fun of us because, like, so much of our country doesn't believe in evolution. We Probably there are people out there that think the world is flat. Oh, God. They're, prob uh, I hope they're probably all related to Sarah Palin. Probably. I'm – although, okay, so my wife's family is tangentially related to her 
through Todd Palin like like a million times removed. And I was like, oh, can't you guys do something? And they were like, no. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh, so we're we're gonna leave that bit of of ignorance, and uh, we're gonna go over to Michigan. Ann Arbor. I can't. Michigan. This this story seriously made me laugh. Yeah. So, University of Michigan fraternity Sigma Alpha Mu trashed a ski resort in central Michigan, creating $50,000 in damages and unbelievable pictures. How can you do that much damage? <laughs> the fraternity left its rooms at Treetops Resort with broken furniture, solo cups, and trash strewn over the hallways and rooms. There were enough foreign fluids that a hazmat team was called in. Oh guys! Okay, okay, guys, 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 guys. I know, I know everybody here that's probably listening to this, probably listening to it after MAGFest. MAGFest is going on right now. There are orgies probably going on everywhere. Right and, now. People yeah. are climaxing right fucking now, you guys. Yes, no pun intended. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but uh, if you're going to have an orgy, clean up after it. Oh, my God. I mean, it sounded like they didn't have an orgy. It sounded like they had like the, a wild fucking party. Everybody peed all over the place and puked everywhere and... Well, you know, or that you know, sometimes the line between wild party and orgy sometimes blur. True, true. Sometimes it happens. Uh, we had a group of, of of a fraternity that was visiting and had an excessive party and did damage on the resort. Food, beer, alcohol, the walls, carpet damage, ceiling broken down, and furniture damage, said Barry Owens, the general manager of Treetops. They had a series of rooms, a couple of floors of rooms. Obviously, things got out of hand. We estimate the cleanup and damage is around $50,000. I have to feel for feel for this guy because, okay, they'll be able to build the uh, the fraternity or build a school, and that's fine. But they're going to be losing money while those rooms are shut down for renovation. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 when stuff like this happens, I am totally on the side of the hotel or bed and breakfast or whoever owners. Oh, totally. Because, you know, they in good faith rent rooms to people, and then they're like, oh, my God, why is there puke everywhere? Yeah, I mean, I mean I've... I've... I've rented out hotel rooms, you know, like like when I was driving more often, I would go, you know, I'd bed down in Ohio for a little bit here, rent a room, and the most that we ever did was, like, leave a Bible in the microwave. Didn't Why did you put, the, was it your Bible? It wasn't mine, it, it, was, it was like the, the little Gideon Bible that they have in the rooms. Oh, you know, that like, if you throw them away, it doesn't actually cost the hotel anything, the Gideons just send them free. Yeah. Because the Gideons were like, can we put Bibles in your hotel rooms? The hotel rooms like, I guess, if you like. I, I mean, so basically, the Gideons are hoping that you take the Bible with you. There you go. Like, that, 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 that's, that's, that's their hope. So definitely yeah. set it on fire. What? Well, no, but see, you know, you, you just put it in the microwave just for a goof. If you buy a car from CarSense, there's a Bible in the in the glove compartment. Really? Like, I bought a car from CarSense, yeah. And I was like, why is there a Bible in the glove compartment? Like... Is your warranty that bad that I have to pray? And the guy was like, "No, no, it's our our owner. It's a policy." And I'm like, "I don't want a Bible in my car. I don't want I don't want to pay for that." He's like, "I'm paying for it. I'm like, I don't want, why are you putting a Bible in my car. What if I was Jewish?" He's like, "That's a good point, but I just I can't do anything about it." I'm like, "Whatever, that's fine." Yeah. Uh, don't stress. Probably something from on high. Uh, uh, but thank get you, it but the... on high. Oh, 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 oh. But uh, the fraternity in question will go through the Greek life judiciary process and will have to pay out damages. And the university said in a statement, We are very disappointed in the behavior of some of our students during a weekend visit to two northern Michigan ski resorts. I want to assure you that the organizations and individuals involved will be held accountable for their actions, which is good. Good. This slovenly stuck-up little bastards. Yeah. Fuck these kids. I mean, okay, you want to have a wild party? Fine. Have a wild party, have an orgy with the blood and the beers and, 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 the, and the semen and the puke and the shit going all over the damn place. Okay, fine. You know, but clean up after yourself. And it's, it's common courtesy. Clean up after your orgies. Or your wild parties, alright? Please. And, and if you have to take a bit to rest before you start cleaning, let them know... And, and that way, you know, work something out with them. I'm pretty sure they would be willing to work with you. Yeah. I hope. Yeah, if you're like, look, stuff got out of hand, and we're going to pay for it. You know, don't don't worry. We're so sorry. You know, I've been I've been at conventions where, like, something happened, and something was inadvertently damaged, you know, and the person whose room it was went to the hotel. They went to, con, you know, con ops and said, look, this happened. It was totally an accident, you know, and the, most, and most you know, times it was, like, a superficial damage. The hotel said, that's cool. That's fine. It's regular wear and tear. Don't you worry about it. But don't be a little asshole. Yeah, definitely. It's just, god damn it. No. 
That's your takeaway from this episode. Don't be a little asshole. Don't be a big asshole either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but especially don't be this coming up guy. A flustered, <laughs> a flustered pensioner made an emergency call to police because the foxes were having abnormally long sex in his garden. Uh, one of those old people like, the foxes are fucking, and they've been fucking for a very long time, officer. And I'm very concerned about the length of their fucking. Yeah, and, and uh, let me guess, you only watch five-minute porno scenes, right? Mm -hmm. No, I just think it's great. Yeah. Peter Cormel, 68, from Berlin, said he spotted the animals and worried they were in distress. See, the thing is that it's not even that he's an old man who's angry. It's just he's worried about the fucking foxes. Like, actually, <laughs> I meant it that way. Like, they, he's like, they've been fucking for so long. I hope that they're all right. I should call someone. I don't want the fucking foxes to be injured. Yeah. He said, I thought the animals had got stuck together and they might injure themselves permanently. But police weren't in the slightest bit interested. <laughs> He was called to, told to call a forester and stop wasting police time. Oh, Jesus. And he should have called animal control. Is what he should have called. Yeah, well, an animal expert explained foxes have sex for at least 20 minutes because the male semen is slow moving. Whilst they're having sex, the male penis expands to stop them separating before ejaculation. Ooh, that's a good evolutionary thing, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's like cats He's like, with the barbecue. Hold on, baby. Hold on, hold on. It's coming. It's coming. You've been saying that for 50. No, it's really coming. I'm stuck. No, no, seriously, it's coming. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, fox, geez. fox furries, you have a lot of explaining to do. Yeah. Mm. Uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Another one. Okay, admittedly, this is another one that, that I put in here, and then Nash came up and said, hey, we got to talk about this and what the fuck is wrong with you. Oh, boy. But West Palm Beach, Florida. Take a shot. A teen posed as a doctor at a hospital in South Florida for an entire month, and no one seemed to notice. How does this keep happening? I don't know. This keeps happening. But according to the local news station, the 17-year-old apparently walked the halls of St. Mary's Medical Center wearing a white coat with a St. Mary's logo and anesthesiology <laughs> embroidered on the front. On Tuesday, the teen was busted while wearing a stethoscope around his neck and a mask on his face. He was in an examination room with a patient while a real doctor was conducting an exam. He presented himself with a what? patient of our practice and introduced himself as Dr. Robinson, Dr. Sebastian Kent said. The first thing I thought was, I'm getting really old because these young doctors look younger <laughs> every year. That poor guy, he must be like, I was right all along. Yeah, Kent called security, who called police. Personnel, even security guards around the hospital had seen him for weeks and believed he was someone official. You had one job, guys! One job! You have to check those badges. Yeah. Check those security badges. Uh, the team's mom, mom responded to the scene, telling police that her son had an undisclosed illness and he had not been taking his medication. Oh, dear. Uh, the hospital released a statement reading, in part, the individual never had contact with any hospital patients and did not gain access to any patient care areas of the hospital at any time. The hospital immediately notified local authorities who took the individual into custody. And we are cooperating with their ongoing investigation. Now, the police and hospital have decided not to charge the teenager. Well, because all he was really doing is walking around and, and presenting himself as a doctor. He, it sounds like there might be a wee bit of mental illness going on here, but yeah. at least... I mean, she did say that he's that he's ill and under the care of a doctor and not taking his medication. So I can see that happening. Yeah. But so I don't blame him because he has some issues. It's good they didn't charge him. But how does this keep happening? Like what the oh. fuck? It's like you know what? Doogie Howser is does not exist. <laughs> I remember that show. I know too. I, I used like... to watch Doogie Howser. <sighs> Doogie Howser is, is is not a true story. It, it's not meant to be a template for future generations. It just doesn't happen. Do you remember the episode where he was at a party and had one drink? And then his dad, like, lit him up and down because he was on call. He was like, how could you even think of perhaps practicing medicine while you're drunk? And it was like, we had to watch it in health class because oh, it was God. a serious episode. You know, it's been way too long since I've watched an episode um, of that series. I, I should, someone I should, should do it. That. You know what? Hmm? Someone. No, Lupa. Lupa must do the vlogs. Oh, Lupa! She does all listening? that great '80s and '90s stuff. Hold on, uh, I'm gonna tweet at her right now. You keep oh, talking. Oh, oh yeah, Lupa, you need to do this. <laughs> oh, now let's see. Uh, how much time do we have? Oh, uh, yeah, we got, we got, we got enough time. We got quite a few more stories left. Oh, uh, so it's time for mood whiplash because this one's gonna piss off a lot of people. Out of Kentucky. Hi, Danny. 
I know you know about this one. I've seen you reblog it. Uh, last year, Atherton High School in Louisville approved a policy ensuring that transgender students can access all spaces and activities in accordance with their gender identity. But now, a Kentucky state senator wants to ban all transgender students from safely using the bathroom. <laughs> senator C.B. Embry <laughs> Jr., a Republican, naturally, has introduced what he calls the Kentucky Student Privacy Act, SB 76, which would force all students to be identified by their biological sex, quote-unquote, as determined by their chromosomes and what was assigned to them according to their anatomy at birth, essentially erasing transgender students. The bill requires that bathrooms and locker rooms must be divided according to biological sex, and schools are forbidden from accommodating transgender students by allowing them access to any facility designated for use by students of the opposite biological sex while students of opposite biological sex are present or could be present. Instead, transgender students requiring accommodation must settle for access to single-stall restrooms, access to unisex bathrooms, or a controlled use of faculty bathrooms, locker rooms, or shower rooms. This means that if the only such facility is in the nurse's office, for example, a student would be required to schlep as far as that office to use the Wait restroom. Wait a minute. Who was, the, who was the journalist that used schlep in a sentence? I sentence. Don't, you know what? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> schlep as far. Really? Do continue. <laughs> Moreover, Embry wants to actually punish schools like Atherton that respect trans, trans students' identities. I rented this tongue. The bill provides that any student who encounters permission, who encounters a person of the opposite biological sex in a bathroom or locker room shall have a legal cause of action beca- if it's because the school gave the trans student permission or didn't explicitly prohibit the trans student from using that facility. The aggrieved student would be entitled to $22,500 from the offending school for each instance he or she encountered a trans student in a sex-divided facility in addition to monetary damages for all psychological, emotional, and physical harm suffered and, etern- and attorney's fees. That is ripe, ripe for abuse. It is. For one thing, and for another thing, I, I've been saying this pretty much off and on for the past few years, but what is wrong with just having unisex bathrooms outright? I know people are going to have a lot of their concerns. You know, they're, they're going to be concerned. Well, you know, you know, you might get, you know, some creepo might go in there and rape you or, or, or assault you or something like that. Well, you know what? Creepos do that anyway. Well, here, here's here's the thing. All right, so as you may or may not know, I am a lesbian. Mm-hmm. Um, so I used a women's restroom. So technically, you know, other women should be afraid of me. Oh no, because I I am the kind of person who would be sexually attracted to them. How should I be in the same restroom? It'd be like a guy being in the restroom. No, that's not happening. Gay men use the men's room. Yeah. Should you be like, oh no, what if a gay man goes in the bathroom? Oh no, he'll ass rape me. No. That doesn't happen. And, 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 and let me tell you something, all right? I, I, I was dating a girl once. People was, should be free to pee. Amen. Yeah. You know, it's like I was sitting there in her bedroom. She had like an adjacent bathroom or whatever. And she, we, she would go in there. She had to go to the bathroom at one point. And I'm just sitting there laying back, you know, relaxing or whatever. And she's talking to me while she's on the pot. And I'm like, you know what? It, it's, it's decent conversation, but this is so not turning me on. You know. It's weird. I don't like. I don't like to talk to people when I'm in the restaurant. I don't like make conversation. I just I'm there for a purpose, and that that's how it goes. Yeah. Like even if I'm with my wife, I'm like, oh, I gotta use the bathroom. My bag. She's like, oh, I'll go too. We don't have conversations. Stall by it's next. No, it's not what you do. I'm a firm believer in the male restroom uh, etiquette, where you just don't you just ignore everybody else. I don't want to talk. I don't want to chat. No, it's not fun. Happy time. I'm doing a thing. I'm done doing a thing. I'm gone. Exactly. It's just no, please no. I mean, I, I'm I'm taking a piss. I'm just relieving myself. It's like the only privacy you are you are guaranteed in a public restroom is the stall. Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't like people like oh well, haha. You know, I've been married for twenty years. My wife uses the bathroom on this. No, that you have your special time in the stall, in the or in the bathroom if you're at home or somewhere, and that's it. That's the privacy you are guaranteed in public restroom. That's why it, the word public comes before restroom. Amen. Yeah, it's just oh god damn. Thankfully, besides I'm, like I'm... like our guys, I, I, like the thing is, I think this is seriously like a a way to to police women because our guys really concerned that a a trans man is gonna come in and like use the bathroom. Like guys didn't care. They'd be like, "So do you have a dick? Like, can I see it? Like curiosity, you know?" 
Like, I don't think that would be a thing, you know? Like, it's basically because people are trying to say, we must protect the, the, the girls because they will be raped by, by trans women. But no, that doesn't happen. Oh. So it's just another, I don't know. Yeah, and again, like I said, you know, if somebody is dead set on assaulting somebody, a little thing like a sign on the bathroom is not going to stop them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just not going to happen. You know, and, and you know, you're going to have fuckers that, that, you know, sit in the pipes and wait to get be pissed or shat on. And that goes for both genders, by the way. It happens to both. That doesn't mean you have to keep the, the you know, the restrooms, you know, separated. Have, have all of them be unisex, because why the fuck not, you know? I mean, there's, there's, everybody pisses the same, everybody shits the same. Unless you had a shit ton of Taco Bell, then some people shit a lot more than others. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it all smells the same. It all looks the same. It doesn't matter. It's know? it's it's just one of those things that like trans people have the same rights as you do. They got they're just regular people like you. Yeah. You know why will you not let them pee? Everyone, you know, and even so, if someone's not trans, maybe they're just androgynous looking. You're like, oh no, get out of the restroom. They're like, I deserve to be here too. I have to pee. Yeah. There you go. You know, it's just it's a thing that, that that we all just need to just get over it, basically. You know, this whole this whole separated restroom thing. Just get the fuck over it. We all shit and piss the same, and you're not gonna be assaulted by some pervert who is trying to look up your dress or anything. All right. Trust me. Again, if guys or girls, it could be either way, if they are really, really, really hell bent on seeing you pee, they will find a way. And. <laughs> And speaking of finding a way, I'm actually uh, skipping down a couple of them because it really ties in. Uh, Back to Florida to take another shot. Employees at Miami's Ocean Bank are lucky enough to have a gym in their office. Oh, cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, police say they also had a colleague with a nasty porn habit. What? Police say John Shower, 33, installed a hidden video camera in the ceiling tile of the gym's shower. Uh, ah. Detectives didn't have to look far to find the culprit. He accidentally recorded himself putting in the camera. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> Miami police on Friday arrested Shower on, on a video voyeurism charge. He filmed a female employee disrobing and using the shower and bathroom, cops say. Employee earlier this month noticed the camera and notified security at the bank. Police say that Shower, who works preparing loans for the bank, admitted that he installed the camera. He advised that he is addicted to porn and his fetish is to do voyeurism, according to an arrest report. And Shower could not be reached for comment. And I'm pronouncing it Shower, uh, spelled S-C-H-A-U-E-R. Yeah, that looks way, like it's those. right. So, so if, if you know, I, and I'm putting that out there in case somebody, you know, knows the spelling and it's like, no, it's, it's Shower or, or Shower. You know? This what I don't get. Like, there is porn for every kind of fetish. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything, anything you want, there is probably someone that does it on the internet. Yeah. Like, all you have to do is send them some money. And they will send you videotapes or, I'm sorry, DVDs, because, yeah, videotapes are whole them. But you, why do people keep doing this? They get arrested, yeah. they lose their jobs, they have to pay all these fines. You could just pay someone twenty nine ninety nine, and they'll send you their videos of their porn. Yeah. Why does it have to be this way? Uh, it's just, uh, I think I think I could kind of see the thrill behind it. Not necessarily behind voyeurism itself, but you know, wanting to see people that you know, that you are attracted to in your daily life, in various states of undress. I could understand that. That does not excuse this fucker. Yeah, but see, then you get all the people that you don't, you're not attracted to in various states of undress, and that can't be fun either. Yeah. Or maybe, or maybe he's like me. He's attracted to almost any any human with tits and a vagina. It's like, oh no, shit! Fast forward, fast forward. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh no, Mr. Anderson didn't want to see that. Oh no, fast forward. Yeah, I know, right? Or, or who knows? He could be bisexual. Yeah, God, that's true. Yeah, maybe he just doesn't like Todd Anderson, who is a fictional person who works at this this shop. <laughs> I've now decided. <laughs> Todd Anderson's go. like nobody likes me naked. Boo. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, this guy. I'm I'm glad they got him. It's like you fucking idiot. You know. See, that's what I mean by people. If if people are going to want, if they're that dedicated to spark emotion, to watch you just shower and shit and everything like that, they're gonna find a way to do it. You know, if they're that dedicated to spark emotion, most people don't want to put out that kind of effort. Cause... No. Why would you? 
It's just it's too much work just to sit there and fap for ten minutes. Oh, just buy porn. There you go. You got just porn pay on the for internet. it. It's safer. Just, just I'm sure no matter. And I say this to everyone. No matter what you're into, I'm sure there's someone that will be willing to take your PayPal money. Yeah. And send you porn. Oh yeah, definitely. Although I don't know just if you saying. can use PayPal for it because you know you, PayPal gets. Can you not? I thought you could use PayPal like everywhere in the world. Oh no, no. Like hell, PayPal gets a stick up its ass if you buy like like uh, uh, um. Uh, drawn porn. You know, so. I've never tried to buy porn with PayPal. I just, Me neither. you know, sometimes places will be like, would you like to check out with Amazon or would you like to check out with PayPal? And sometimes I have, because Blip sends money through PayPal. So sometimes if I have a Blip payment in there, I'll be like, oh, I'll just use PayPal and use my, spend my Blip money. Yeah. Oh. So, so uh, got two more stories. Going to go a little over the hour mark because I really want to get these out. Um, Athens, Alabama. Saturday evening, police responded to Walmart in Athens after reports of a woman trying to give away a young child at the store. Oh, no. Investigators said that the intoxicated Sabrina Ann Thompson was not the child's mother. However, she well, was a relative of the child. Her child. Would you like to buy this child? Where'd it come from? I don't know. <laughs> Thompson is charged with endangerment of a child and possession of drug paraphernalia. Meth is a hell of a drug, man. Uh, the child it had, is now... to, it had to have been meth. It had to. Yeah. The child is now back with the parents. Good. The woman was arrested and taken to the Limestone County Jail. Case is still under investigation. As soon as more information becomes available, they'll pass it along. But just this alone, holy shit. What poor child, because that's going to be years of therapy. You know, we would imagine the parents like, oh, okay, well, Aunt, Aunt Sabrina's going to take you out, okay? She's going to take you out on the town today, all right? Okay. <laughs> you, you, you entrust the safety of your child to a relative. And like, she what? Yeah. What did she do? It's like, Mama, she tried to sell me. <laughs> oh, God. At the Walmart. Oh, at the Walmart of all places. God damn. There's a reason why Florida outlawed this shit, you know? Like, it's what? an actual written law that you cannot Wait, sell your child. Oh, my God. You guys had to have a law for that? Yes. Jesus. Remember, this is also the same state that had a law outlawing, out, outlawing porcupine fucking. Oh, that's true. So, well, if you, you know, if you want to if you want to fuck a porcupine, you deserve whatever you get. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and our last news story comes out of Hong Kong. A 32-year-old man was found dead in an internet cafe in Taiwan after a marathon three-day gaming binge, the oh island's my. second death of an online gamer this year. What is today? This is we are recording. This is the this first month of the year, and two people have died. What the fuck? Okay. People get into it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I, okay, I'll admit there have been some days where it was like, you know, eight hours later, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I should have been doing something else. Yeah, I've, I've had my marathon days, you know, binge days. Sometimes they're, they're in the, in the, uh, in the uh, sense of recording my Gomer play series, you know, that sort of thing. But on the other hand, hey, most, of my, my, most of my gaming stuff is portable. So I can take it with me. So I, I have no need to poop sock or, or pee in a bottle or anything. I just Wait, what take... did you just say? Poop, poop sock. sock. Yes. Is that a thing? That is a thing. What? Yeah. Like, they don't want to leave a game. You know, like like, like these MMORPG players, uh, I think stereotypically, they don't want to leave the game, so they'll just shit in their sock. Like the sock that they're wearing? Or... A sock they could have been wearing, but they decided to make it hold their shit. Jesus! Like what the fuck? There, there is a, there is actually a, a, a trope called anti poop socking features. Oh my god! Why so, does this exist? Why? I don't know. Uh, but the man, surnamed Hsie, 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 I, I have no idea. I think it's Sing. 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 So I don't know. I have no idea. But he entered the cafe in. Uh, Kas, Kas, I have no idea. Taiwan's second largest city on January 6th. Jennifer Wu, a police spokesperson from the whatever district told district precinct told CNN, an employee found him motionless and sprawled on a table at 10 a.m. on January 8th, and he was rushed to a hospital where he was pronounced dead from cardiac failure. You know, the stench from the shit. You know, you know, I'm willing to bet that they, they didn't check the shit stench at first because, oh, he just fucking poop sock, fucking poop soccer. Ah, uh, what the fuck? I don't even know what to say. It's like, 
Wow. It is not known exactly how long the man lay dead in the Internet Cafe, but the police said his corpse had begun to stiffen, so he must have been dead for several hours before they arrived on the scene. Jesus. Uh, it is just... Wow, dude. Dude, no. Oh. Uh, so, and his death came after th a 38-year-old man was found dead at an internet cafe in Taipei on January 1st after playing video games for five days straight. Oh my god, you guys, it's not that important to go eat, go drink something, go pee. Yes, that's why we have pause buttons. That's why they have the anti, you know, the anti-poop socking features and all of that good shit, you know? You know, that's why we have that. So you can eat. And at the very least, hey, you know what? If you have to take it on the go, you know, if you have, like, your fucking, you know, 3DS with you, you could just go to a Waffle House and you could tell them, hey, get me some food to put in my face. That's mm -hmm. why we have laptops. That's why we have, like, the portable Wi-Fi hotspots. That's why we have this shit so we can stay connected. If we really, if we're really that dedicated to Sparkle Motion, you know, you know, you go to a fucking Waffle House or a Denny's or something, and you say, hey, keep bringing me food. I will keep paying you. I need to make sure I do not leave this game. You know, that is the way to do it. <laughs> if you are going to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So and, and yes, two deaths from people taking too long, you know, not wanting to leave their precious video games this year. Within within a week, within a week of each other. What the fuck? It's not that important. No, it's not. It's just a game. It is. It really is just a game. You know, just just go do something else. Go masturbate, please. And, and you know what? You if if you're playing the kind of games I'm thinking you're playing, and they don't have to be porn games, by the way, if that's what some people are thinking, you know. If, if you're playing, you know, the games with, like, the EverQuest and all that shit, you can masturbate to that and be done with it. Because you know how those women look. Ugh. Oh. You know, just, just... Games are fun. Games can be important, especially if you're trying to make a living playing games. Hello. Um, yeah, but, you know, go take a break. I mean, I'm sure even pro gamers, yeah. you know. Yeah, even pro gamers breaks. look at them like, what the fuck? God damn! So, that is it for the news, and thus that is it for this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy, it's been a hell of a hell of a hell of a show this week. Hell of a show. So, um, so uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, if we wanted to find Omega on the social media, where could we find her? You can find me on the Twitters at the Omega Geek. I have a Facebook fan page. I have a dot com. It's the Omega Geek dot com. I can be found on our RT Goma Productions. I can be found occasionally on Nerdvice when I remember how to update my account. I can also be found on the channel awesome. com. Yes, which which you actually had one of your videos go up today. Yeah, I actually had two this week, and I had uh, we had lesbian talk yesterday, and then the first of the What Went Right show, uh, Farewell Mr. Hooper, went up today. Actually, to, to there's a lot of comments. A lot of people really enjoyed the video, so I'm hopeful. Sweet. I'm going to post the rest of What Went Right, and hopefully should be doing another another few episodes in February and March. Nice. Ah. I, I I like it because I a lot of what we review, you know, everyone in the review verse is overwhelmingly negative, but there's a lot of stuff that was really really awesome, and the cool thing is that my audience for what went right is, is twofold. One is the kids who are too young to remember but are seeing this for the first time, mm -hmm. and the other is the people who are my age and remember like holy shit, I remember that. So. Oh yeah. There you go. Uh, I admit I didn't remember Mr. Hooper because I I watched Sesame Street growing up, but I didn't remember much of the like. Because the he died, he died in '82, and the episode aired in '83. I was only I was only I was nearly four then, so you're uh, younger than me. You would have been a baby then. Ah, uh, that's true. That is true. So it would have been a baby. Yes, and and yes, I was an adorable baby. <laughs> oh. And then look what happened to me. Oh. So. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I don't think I'm that bad looking. Um. Uh, so yeah. Uh, if you want to find me on the social media, uh, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. I do have my own Facebook page, uh, just Gomer the Ranting Thespian on Facebook. Go look me up, and I do post updates and everything. Uh, in fact, uh, right now I've got the uh, you know the last uh, Zelda First Quest episode up and ready to go. Um, next month, 
the Bionic Commando trilogy should start going up. I've got one third of it completed. I just need to finish the other thir two thirds. Uh, hopefully, if, if one of these trucking jobs works out, I, sh I should be able to have both of those done before I hit the road. That way, all I have to do is just have them there and just link them all when the time comes. <laughs> oh, so that's all that's coming up. And hopefully this this week we'll actually have a three podcast week because you know past few weeks you know we just ha have scheduling issues with everybody. Um, but if you've been at Magfest or you're at Magfest and you're listening to this, you know hope you guys have or have had fun and and everybody is safe and everything. And um, oh yeah, so it'll be it'll be it'll be fun to hear stories. And I already told Holly I am setting aside the next time she is on for just. Holly's Magfest story time, <laughs> so we uh, so I am going to have to do that. Oh, so again, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the ranting thespian, with the Omega, signing off. Bye bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash beckyhop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows. 